What does Garten of Ban, Ban 2 hide off camera from the player? The second chapter of Garten of Ban, Ban is a lot longer than the first, and features a few different departments in this odd kindergarten complex. In this video, we'll be heading out of bounds to find some interesting things, and we'll even be breaking the game in unintended ways. If you like behind the scenes videos on your favorite horror games, subscribe now. And I hope you enjoy the video. As always, I like to start with a very brief recap so we are all on the same page. We start this chapter off recovering from our fall with Jumbo Josh. We end up heading out of this room and over into the comms sector. We then meet Bam Bam over the speaker system, solve a puzzle, and head down into the warehouse. We make our way through the maze, get chased by Nab Nab on the ceiling, and then ultimately get knocked out by Bam Bam. Once we recover, we end up in the medical sector. After solving a very quick puzzle, we then take an elevator up and then must grab extract from the different experiments over here. This allows us to clear out the giant Captain Fiddles and proceed onward. We spot this giant worm on our way to the testing sector and eventually get chased by a pillow bird into Bambolina's classroom, where we are subjected to her long and drawn out deadly quizzes. We escape from her, do a quick bird up puzzle, get chased by a snail, shoot some cannons to solve a puzzle, jump on some platforms, and then get chased by Bambolina and Jumbo Josh until the end of the chapter. Okay, that recap was a bit longer than I thought, but let's dive in. So the Jumbo Josh room that we start in is quite interesting. For starters, there's actually no ceiling in the room. There is a light floating above us, but the quote unquote ceiling is just the black void of the out of bounds area. You just can't tell from the player's point of view. Of course, this makes sense because we did fall down a giant hole, but there is that floating light, which is a bit odd. But actually just outside this room is quite a lot of secrets. For starters, on the opposite side of this wall in the back is actually a direct call out to this video. So there's a message out of bounds on the wall that is calling out hackers, which reads, you can fly, teach me. Obviously only people hacking the game will see this. So it's kind of funny, but not far from here. We actually have several copies of characters floating out of bounds. We have Celine the snail frozen in an interesting pose on a floating platform. And right next to them, we have Bam Bam and Bambolina. And now there's actually two copies of these set of characters. So one copy of these characters is just them standing in front of each other. And another copy of these characters are holding each other, similar to the pose on the cake at the end of the chapter. And now if we follow the starting room around to the other side, we can find a floating green copy of our drone. And if we look closely at this drone, we'll see that it has the official merch of the Opilla Bird beanie on it. And not far from this drone are several floating gray platforms. And of course, these platforms have more characters. So we have the adult blue Opilla Bird again, which is something we found in the first chapter of the game that hasn't appeared in the game yet, to my knowledge. We have like the little blue chick of this bird, but I don't believe we have the full scale one in any secret. And right next to this bird, we also have another copy of Bam Bam as well. But now we are going to exit Jumbo Josh's room and head over to the comm sector because we have a chase scene. So as we're making our way into the comm section, if we turn around, we will see Nab Nab sort of like leaning out in a doorway. And now if we try to walk up to him, Nab Nab will hide and disappear. However, if we warp behind Nab Nab, we can skip the trigger where he disappears. So we are free to jump on him and he does not interact with us at all. And at this point, if we now trigger Nab Nab to disappear, you'll see that once they get beyond the doorway, they continue to lean over to the left and eventually they come to a standstill before they ultimately unload. Also on the roof of the comm sector, there is a copy of the customizable drone station. Although I didn't end up getting close up footage of it, but you can see it here in this shot. So now we're going to focus on the warehouse itself. Now the warehouse is kind of interesting when we view it from the outside. You can kind of take in the full warehouse like this. So for those who are curious, there is a door in the warehouse that does not open. And if we were to look behind it, we'll see that it does not lead anywhere. Now, when Nab Nab starts attacking us, we can mess with him a bit. As you may have seen in my game breaking video before, Nab Nab sort of just follows us wherever we go. However, this time we can see that he cannot actually leave this room. He's stuck inside of it. However, he can run to the absolute edges of the warehouse. And quite a few times he almost got me, but I pulled back just at the right time. I do find it a bit interesting that he can go all the way out here because the player normally cannot access any of these areas. So something else that I found interesting is that the floor for the warehouse actually extends farther out of bounds. So we can walk along the warehouse safely out here. So I was playing a game of chicken with Nab Nab for a while to see if he could get me. And it turns out that Nab Nab can only defeat the player if they are below him. And this means that even if you're beneath the floor, Nab Nab can still get you. 
Next up, I wanted to see what Bam Bam does when he sneaks up behind us and knocks us out. Unfortunately though, I wasn't able to get rid of the screen blur or the message on the screen, but I'm pretty sure he just magically appears behind us anyways, so we're gonna head over to the medical wing now. Now if we were to go out of bounds around the medical wing and go far beneath the area where we start, we will find that the elevator that we eventually take up is stored down here. It's just dangling above the void and eventually gets called up to our position. Now on the next floor up, we have all these different Captain Fiddles that we have to get extract from. And what's interesting is that even though there's enough to get extract for what we need for the actual game, there is another Captain Fiddles that we can never reach. Way beneath this area, there is a Captain Fiddles stored out of bounds, just T-posing. And quite literally, he is T-posing because he is a T. There's also a floating key card reader down here. Oddly enough, if we go back to the area that we first started in, in the medical wing, there is a copy of the vending machine beneath the actual vending machine on the map. Not sure why it's here, but it is. Now by far the most interesting thing in the medical sector is the giant Captain Fiddles. So this giant, like, lime green monster that we can see the eyeball of, that is a massive Captain Fiddles. And normally you cannot see the rest of his body, but here's what his body looks like off camera. It's just clipping through the ground. You can see his giant legs just poking out of the building. There's also a red button underneath the floor next to him. But we're gonna mess with this guy. So right over by the cannon beneath the floor is a pack of fireworks that we normally can never access. However, if we just straight up delete the floor, we can then access a firework very easily and then load the cannon. And what I found pretty crazy is that shooting this giant Captain Fiddles makes his eyeball pop out and his body warps really far backwards. Then his body just suddenly collapses flat. To get a better look at this, I turned off all the surrounding walls so you can see this more clearly. Watching him get shot by a cannon from this angle is a very bizarre sight. This Captain Fiddles has certainly seen better days, but I have to say, I wouldn't mind having this fella on my limbo team. As we move on, we pass by the giant creepy worm thing, and then we eventually get chased by a pillow bird. But I was super curious to see if a pillow bird could leave the hallway to come after us. But Opilla can't. They get stuck right near the doorway and just sit in place. However, if we remove parts of the map, they can get a bit closer than usual. And something truly baffling happens. If a pillow moves too far out, the face basically gets ripped off and painted. Or at least that's what it looks like. In reality, what's happening, somehow, the wall textures of that paint effect that goes down this long corridor is being applied to a pillow bird's model. And so the face textures for a pillow just get covered up. So we can see this blue color on a pillow's face, and then if we move a pillow bird, we can see right before I get jump scared, the pillow bird's face can go deep purple. So this got me thinking. I was curious if Banbalina also would change colors too. So I got both of them coming down the hallway, and the music at this moment was enough to make my ears bleed. Just take a quick listen. Nothing better than two duplicate chase themes overlapping. But anyways, I got them both down the hallway, but a pillow bird was more aggressive. So unfortunately, I had to delete a pillow bird so Bambolina would come. But when I eventually got Bambolina down there, she wasn't being affected like a pillow was. I'm not entirely sure why. Perhaps it's the way that a pillow bird is set up compared to Bambolina. So I just removed the ground and dropped both of us off the cliff. And I don't know if my previous actions screwed something up, but heading into Bambolina's classroom, I think the game somehow broke. When I sat down to do the class, I was able to move around still. So I'm not sure what happened. Normally you're stuck in a chair and you can't move while the questions are being asked. However, I was free to move, so I just got up and left. Trying to leave the classroom while she's talking to you makes her call you a bad student and chases after you, even though her other dialogue still continues. It's a bit confusing to listen to. However, she can't go past the bowling pins though, although I suppose normally neither could we. So next up we have the bird room, and as we enter it, we see all the birds peeking around the corner at us. Now before we can get to them, they typically recede around this wall and disappear. However, this is how that looks behind the scenes. As you can see, the birds are just floating and their necks are stretched around the wall. And as we approach, they all retract through each other and then eventually come to a standstill and unload. It's definitely a bit weird looking from this angle. Now, we have a pillow bird behind this door and once we open it, a pillow bird will chase us. If we skip this door though, a pillow will just look at us in the hallway and rotate their head around. Unlike most characters in this game, a pillow bird does not have a limit on how far their head will rotate. 
And of course, touching this pink wonder at all will straight up get us birded. Trying to activate a pillow bird and running back to Bambleon's classroom isn't too exciting because a pillow bird won't walk past the staircase. But if we check out the classroom, we'll find Bambolina just sitting there looking at us. Apparently, she just reloads back into this area if we leave her classroom and get jump scared somewhere else. Now, Slow Celine normally destroys you if you move, but if we eliminate her collider on her model, she will run straight at us and we won't feel a thing. We do go inside of her shell though, which is a bit odd. Also, it seems like there are multiple layers to triggering her jump scare. Because even though we aren't defeated this way, we cannot change the direction we are facing at all now. It's pretty strange, and Slow Celine is completely frozen in place. In the next two areas, there isn't a whole lot, but the cannon room does have an interesting secret. You would never know this, but on top of the roof of this room, we can find Ban Ban just standing there. I'm not sure why he's up here, but it's an interesting find. Beneath the room, we can find something else as well, and it's just a single rocket floating down here. The jumping area doesn't have much to document, but boy oh boy, does the final chase. For starters, the elevator appears way below the map, and Bam Bam isn't on it at first. Bam Bam just appears the moment the elevator starts moving up. He loads in looking at us very strangely before standing straight up. The elevator itself doesn't actually have a full lift on the bottom either. It gets cut off. Now of course, it's time to break things, so we are first going to get on the elevator with Bam Bam. Ironic that Bam Bam says that on a normal day, we'd be behind the glass with him. So I guess it's a normal day. Once the chase starts though, we can ride the elevator down with him. However, the elevator just stops abruptly out of view. Up top, Bambolina can't find us, so she doesn't even bother to chase us. She just stands still at the end of her hallway. What's really funny to me is how long Jumbo Josh gets stretched. His torso is extremely long. And if we remove some walls, you can get a full glimpse of this long lad. So before the chase starts, there's actually two Jumbo Joshes side by side beneath the floor. And each one of these Jumbo Joshes gets warped to a different location when Jumbo Josh pops out to attack us, which we'll cover in a second. So we can see this first Josh leave and get teleported up top to the first door, and then his arm stretches all the way to the door and his torso soon follows. It looks pretty funny given how distorted he looks. If we delete the hallway in front of Bambolina, even if she wanted to come get us, she can't because there isn't a direct route. So as we run down this hallway, Jumbo Josh will pop out and punch us. And this is what that looks like. He snaps into place and his arm gets stretched out to make the punch. Afterwards, his shoulder slides behind him and he warps back beneath the floor again. If we move into the middle hallway, we have the double punch. And it's odd because Jumbo Josh actually appears behind the opposite wall and then clips through the hallway to get into position. You can actually see him warp in front of you. He just straight up clips through the hallway and gets ready to attack you. So what's happening is he is still too long from being stretched out before. So when his legs warp into place outside these doors that he punches through, his upper body part is clipping through the hallway because he's so long. Then his upper body retracts back into place. Watching this in slow motion is very strange and I'm not sure why this was left in. He then bends his arms back and punches the doors off. When he's done, he collapses underground and his face clips through his body into this mangled mess. In case you were curious, you can't jump onto Josh down below as you'll pass through him and die. Josh then punches us through the ceiling and if we take another peek out of bounds, this is what that looks like. And as Jumbo Josh's arm retracts, his fist ends up passing through his head. Now we're gonna take a quick break from Josh for a second and we're gonna focus on something else out of bounds because we have another discovery waiting for us just outside these walls. So this is Nab Nab or a beta version of Nab Nab and he's just sitting out here. So this Nab Nab looks different and doesn't have any eyes and this version is just outside the hallway above us. We can even warp our character up here and take a look as there's a walkable path that leads us right to Nab Nab. Going back inside the building, we have another punch from Josh that comes from another door. And from a side view, we can see Josh's arm clip through the wall. Right after this, Josh is warped way below the level. And you can see his shoulder has certainly seen better days. It's definitely dislocated. Up top, we have our final room where Bambolina gets smashed by Josh and drops a keycard. I was a bit surprised, but just beyond one of the walls in this area is another copy of Bambolina just sitting here. I took down all the walls around this area so we could get a clear visual of how Josh attacked Bambolina. And this is what it looks like in slow motion. Josh's face looks super distorted and his very long arm flattens her like a pancake. 
Bambolina is then dragged upwards and off to the side before she ultimately comes to rest next to Jumbo Josh. A moment later, Josh vanishes and Bambolina is left up there alone. So what's actually happening is Josh is again warped across the map way below it, but this time if we try to look at Josh, he will disappear. And the reason this happens is because Josh's bounding box was not moved. So this bounding box that goes around the model has to be looked at through the camera, otherwise Josh will disappear. But because they're in two different locations, Josh vanishes anytime we try to look at him. And to close this chapter off, we now have Slow Celine who takes a look at us. Just out of bounds behind the elevator room, we can find Slow Celine sitting there alongside another keycard reader. And as the elevator goes down, Celine gets warped over to it and looks down. As she tilts her head backwards, she unloads from the game, and the chapter comes to a close. And all that was off camera in Garten of Ban Ban Chapter 2. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, subscribe right now if you did, and I'll see all of you in the next video really really soon. Cheers!